Let's do this again. Let me do that again. Break right here. Go. What's up everyone, Brandon from Gearist here, and today we are going to take a look at the Pegasus Trail, the React Pegasus Trail number four from Nike. Now, before we get into today's review, please don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, click that little notification bell over there so that you get all the updates coming from Gearist. We are back, we are making content, we are putting it out there. If you're not already subscribed to our podcast called Grit, go on to Spotify, Stitcher, Overcast, Apple Podcasts, whatever it is, look for Gearist Grit, G-E-A-R-I-S-T, Grit and you will find it. Thank you so much, and now, let's get into the review. So you know what's weird about this is that I, believe it or not, and if you're you're a familiar person to Gearis, you know us, you know me, you know all the things that we do, it's gonna be kind of surprising. I have never actually run in a Pegasus trail shoe. Now, I bring that up because I'm gonna be quoting in this video review right here a couple of other people, a couple of other of our crew that have run in Pegasus Trail before. So that would be Pegasus Trail 2 and Pegasus Trail 3. That'd be Andrew and Aaron. So we'll talk about those guys. We're gonna give their impressions of this shoe as well. But what's interesting also is that the Nike Air Pegasus, not the React Pegasus, but the Nike Air Pegasus, the OG Pegasus. And in fact, I'll try to find it, see if I can put a picture right here of one of the original Nike Trail Pegasus that I ran in. So back in 1993, I think, the Nike Air Pegasus was the first real running shoe that I ever had. Now, at the time, I was a swimmer, right? I swam year-round, club team swimming, super fast guys, all that sort of thing. So running really wasn't my thing. But if I'm being honest, it was really just a fashion choice. So today, as Andrew, Aaron, and myself take a look at the Nike React Pegasus Trail 4, which we're just probably going to call the Pegasus Trail 4 for the sake of this review, and so that I save like 7,000 words over the course of it. Uh, today, as we look at this, we look at a shoe with a lot more miles in our legs, right? I, I understand what I'm looking at a lot more, especially with Aaron and Andrew along with me. We're looking at a shoe that is called a hybrid shoe. It's a shoe that's meant to go from road to trail to road to trail to road to trail. Uh, but is this a true hybrid shoe? Or is it a shoe that really doesn't have a niche all its own? Which may or may not be a good thing. So without any further ado, let's start by looking at the outsole. Now as we take a look at the outsole, the first thing that I'm going to mention is that I'm not exactly sure, and it's not on the Nike website, it's not anything that I can find, though we will try to find this out from Nike themselves via their uh, media people. Um, I don't know exactly what rubber compound this is. And the reason that that's important is because as I look around online at reviews of the Pegasus 2, the Pegasus 3, Pegasus Trail 2 and 3, um, one of the big things that people talked about was grip. Now, while part of that was certainly the lugs, which we'll mention here in a second, another part of that is definitely the compound. The way that rubber is laid out, the way that rubber is built, whether it's a blown rubber, carbon rubber, whatever it is, all of these things can certainly affect the grip. Now, these lugs that we see here are four millimeters deep. Not sure if you can really tell that. I would get out like a caliper to show you, but they're four millimeter deep lugs. As we can see here on the lateral side of the shoe, we have this kind of like split bar thing going on. On, right so whether it's going toward the back or the front what's interesting is that it's driving as the motion of the shoe comes toward the shoe it's actually pushing grip out and away from the center of the shoe in the forefoot and then back toward the heel of the shoe in the rear foot now this is obviously a portion of kind of depending on which way you're going right so if you're going uphill you want that grip to kind of go like this and spread traction outward to give you more wide and stable base or the feeling of a wide and stable base based around that lug design and as you are decent Ending, you want that coming back toward the heel a little bit more to actually give, again, more traction across the heel depending on which way you're moving. If you're moving this way, your foot is doing this, it's spreading that love out toward the sides. You're moving this way and kind of descending, it's bringing it back in toward the heel to create a stable foundation. Now the medial aspect right here, basically under the front left, or I guess depending on what side, but the inside front third-ish, this section right here, what we see is a different layout, right? So it's kind of like a, I don't know, kind of like a matrix almost, like chevrons that are split up in there. Um, I have noticed that this is very traction 
good. I'm going to talk about that more in a second. Traction good. Sure, that's a that's a way to say that. Uh, one thing that I have also noticed is that there are quite a few cutouts on here, right? So there's essentially exposed foam through here, exposed foam through here. Here we got flex grooves and things like that. But what this really is doing is it's going to be able, be able rather to allow the shoe to save some weight. Now for me with this, I spent about 75% of the miles I put on this shoe on trail. That's because I'm prepping for the Leadville Trail 100 to pace Aaron, who you're going to hear here in a second. And so the trail is really my priority right now. The other 25% of the miles would be on road. Now, some of that trail that I mentioned a second ago is going to be gravel, some hard pack, things like this. Most of the road is going to be paved or sidewalk, you know, concrete, things like that, asphalt, tarmac, whatever it is. Now, in the roads that I was running on, the paved surfaces, which were largely dry, but there were some wet surfaces here and there, some sprinkling some rain being that we're coming out of the spring and now we're in the dog days of summer 2022 uh, this was really unfazed on those it did very well I would be curious to see how this did on snow mind you not ice uh, but I'm not going to have that chance until next winter and by then there will probably be number five coming out of this. Now the trail that I've run on has been everything from very rocky and technical terrain to well-groomed single track and then onto that gravel path I mentioned a second ago. On the well-groomed and light trails that gravel path included, this really did very well. I mean that seems to be where it's at home and it actually kind of brings a lot of that fast and flat road feel over onto the trail. It makes it feel like you're not be using a shoe that's kind of this trail built specific shoe like that which is really great when you're trying to put in kind of those long cruiser miles and you look for more of a road feel to be more efficient on surfaces like that now when rocky and more technical terrain came to play i will say that i was very pleasantly surprised especially based on what i had read around as i mentioned a second ago i was pleasantly surprised at the amount of material grip that was on these now i won't go so far as to call this a sticky rubber it does a good job Job, but it's not something that's got technology like Vibram Mega Grip with traction lug like is used in the uh, Hoka Speed Goat 5, but it is very good. I mean, it holds up in its own right. I felt like I had a good amount of traction and one thing that is worth saying, I have about 50 miles in the shoe and the durability is fantastic. Like it basically, I don't know that I could show you guys really, but the basically the, the outsole looks new. I mean, it really has done a very good job in terms of durability. Now I'm not going to give you Andrew and Aaron's full reviews of this. I'm just kind of going to let you know their comments on the same parts that I'm commenting on. If you'd like to see their full reviews of this as well as mine, which are all kind of in the same piece, go Go on over to Gearist.com and take a look at that. You can see there's a link down below in the comments and you can check that out and find out everything about what they said this shoe did for them. So of the three of us that have put miles on the previous version of this shoe, the Pegasus Trail 3, Andrew is definitely the most. Now I haven't done any miles in that. I think that Aaron did a little bit, but Andrew really has the most experience with the previous iteration of the shoe. Interestingly, a lot of the trails where he lives in Southern California, you wind up from those rare rainstorms they get there, those kind of V slit where the water will run down the middle of a trail and it kind of cuts. So finding uneven and dry rocky terrain for him isn't very difficult. And having put all those miles in model three of this shoe, he really was very pleasantly surprised by this. Aaron as well, he's back east running on more, more PD trails. And actually of the three of us is probably the one that's gonna be doing those road to trail miles because he's the guy training for Leadville Trail 100 coming up this August and about a month from today. Um, but he's also the person that has just gotta be really, really focused on trails. And both of them thought that the durability and the grip of this outsole was actually way beyond what we were expecting. Now, as we move into the midsole as the very long formal name of this shoe would suggest, this is made from Nike React Foam since this is the Nike React Pegasus Trail number four. Now, this is a 36 millimeter stack in the heel and a 26 millimeter stack in the forefoot for an overall drop of 10 millimeters, give or take. Now, I'm not breaking out my calipers to really measure that for you guys. We're cutting it in half to show you those things. But these are measurements that we get from Nike and a few of other independent sources that are telling us exactly what the manufacturing tolerances are there. As opposed to having zoom air or anything like that, this is a big hunk of React foam. And I have to say that I'm a very big fan of this material. What you may notice in the midsole is the distinct lack of a rock plate. Now, 
again, some of you don't want a rock plate. Some of you are going to want a softer rock plate as opposed to a firmer rock plate or even that p plate that might lie underneath there. In any event, this does not have a rock plate, which is going to give you a little more of the sharpness of some of those rocks that are going to push through there. While talking about the midsole, it's always a tricky thing to not get too much into the ride, but hang in there a second and we'll get into the ride in just a minute. In terms of the feel of the midsole, I will tell you that this really lies in a good sweet spot for me. It's not overly soft like marshmallowy, although Aaron did find it to be a little bit more spongy. Uh, I didn't find that myself. I'm not sure why, but it really sits in a good sweet spot. It's not overly firm. It's not overly soft, both of which for me has adverse effects on my feet, depending on the number of miles that I'm putting in there. And it also doesn't arrive at any hot spots, which again is something that can really show up. I'm actually working with a pair of um, super feet uh, insoles right now that I'm very excited about because they allow me to really experience any shoe if I wind up with a hot spot, but that did not happen in this shoe right here. In terms of durability, I don't really see any crushing, right? So that you would see in like EVA foam or something like that. Probably the biggest takeaway for me about the midsole again, which I'll talk about in a, the ride section here in a minute, is how seamlessly it goes from road to trail or path to trail or path to road or whatever it is. It really does a good job of having that consistent feel across those things. So if you're somebody who doesn't want to drive or can't drive drive to a trail for whatever reason, but you can run from your home to a trail, you're gonna have a good consistent feel and not feel like you have to change from one shoe into another. Now for Andrew's take on this, he really loves the React Foam, as do I, as does Aaron. Uh, in his case, he actually does think it handles a little bit more of a technical thing. Again, we'll talk about that in a ride section here in a minute than I do, uh, and that's really great. Again, I think it's gonna depend on the runner. It's gonna depend on your foot, like how sensitive are you to rocks and bumps and bruises and all that sort of thing. Andrew does a very good job of staying light on his feet, really likes it. Uh, Aaron really liked the pop of this foam as well. He really felt like it gave that great transition, just like I did, between road and trail, trail and road, which is, again, it's a way to get down to a one shoe quiver. Now, as we move from the midsole into the upper of the Nike React, Pegasus Trail 4, which is that super long formal name of the shoe, we're met with actually a very soft and supple mesh. Now, interestingly, um, you can see kind of these breathable pieces right here. They're kind of laser cut holes into it. And then up here in the front, I'm not sure you'll be able to see that because here, let me turn my light down. Maybe you can see it those diamond shapes right there. So what's interesting about those things is that they are overlaid on top of the shoe. Um, but interestingly, there's there's no real kick to it, right? So that's a, obviously ostensibly to be your protection from kicking things, which we are all want to do. Trail runners of anybody will definitely find the baby head or like little tiny sapling that's been cut off one inch from the ground and, and trip over it and inevitably eat crap all over the ground. This is not really going to protect on that. You might get some protection where the outsole comes up over the toe right here, but this stuff isn't really doing much. What I have have to assume that is is simply more protection in terms of durability for the front end of the shoe and to keep uh, debris and things that are gonna come in through the toe to keep those things out. Back here at the rear of the shoe, we've got a nicely padded collar. And actually what I like about this is that the padding goes down to probably about here. So there's a good amount of padding in there that it, it, it it serves to, and I'll talk about this in the fit, it serves to not only pad the foot and be comfortable and all that stuff, but what it really does is it keeps the foot nicely held in there without trying to kind of like squeeze it down by way of the laces. It's a really good compromise in that area. So as we go into the interior, we've got a lightly padded tongue here. It's not overly padded, it's not a huge thick amount of foam, but it does protect your foot from the lace pressure that may come from the top for people that are sensitive to that. It is gusseted, right? So you may be able to see this kind of orange piece back here. It's gusseted all the way up to the top. This gusset actually attaches into this padded collar section that I mentioned a second ago. And there's a second layer of mesh that is internal underneath the outside layer of mesh, which goes all the way up and around the toe. It is not partial internal mesh. Um, it is a full internal mesh it, with the exception of, I guess, the throat of the shoe, right? So where the laces are. What that's gonna do is do a good job of not only making the foot feel kind of hugged and locked down in terms of the ride, but it's also gonna keep debris from coming 
coming into the shoe to hang out with you, right? It's not to say the debris can't get in there, but this does a good job of keeping it out from under the toes and things like that. Now I've run in a lot of road shoes that go, we're a hybrid, you can take us on trail. And I've also run in a lot of trail shoes that I look at and go, huh, this looks like it would make sense on a road. But to be honest with you, what happens is that one shoe or one aspect or another winds up kind of rising above the rest. And part of where that differentiation is gonna come is in the upper, because on a trail shoe, you're gonna need something beefier that's gonna hold your foot in place on off camber or kind of like wide angle terrain and what have you. This does a good job of kind of riding the line between both of those. It's not as light an upper as a purely just like road or racing shoe or something like that, but it is offering that same flexibility, that same hug and that same comfort uh, without being this overly beefy thing. On off camber terrain, it did a good job for me. I felt like even when I was being tilted this way, I didn't feel like my foot was sliding off. I think that a lot of that is gonna have to do with the fly wire lacing, again, which you can kind of see here, these orange things sticking up. These are kind of strings that wrap around the foot and underneath the foot almost to really hold the foot in place. That did a very good job in terms of allowing this not overly beefy upper to actually act like one, like something that was gonna hug your foot and keep that off camber terrain at bay so you didn't feel like you were sliding all over the place. Now for Andrew, he actually commented that the sewn in tongue on the Pegasus Trail 3 has kind of morphed into this thing, right? Where he feels like it adds a little bit more versatility to the shoe. He was also a big fan of the way that the fly wire, which is being used right here, I mentioned a second ago, fly wire is used in conjunction with eyelets. Now, what he's saying by that is that right up here at the top, you've got these two eyelets, which is common on a lot of running shoes, but in this, it's gonna allow a more customized feel for you to even be able to skip this uh, top loop right here if you really wanted to. Uh, it's gonna be able to allow that because if you had fly wire all the way up to the top, skipping it doesn't work quite as well as a traditional um, eyelid at the top, which is then going to go back into the collar and really hug around that area. Aaron commented that he really liked the redesigned upper on this and that he also found the foam around here particularly good because in addition to being comfortable and soft on the foot and things like that, the foot and the ankle, the heel, whatever it is, uh, it also keeps rocks from kind of dropping down in there. Now, I don't really have that problem. I actually commented on this in the Speed Goat 5 from Hoka Review. Um, I don't really have that problem, but for people that do, Aaron noticed that this was certainly keeping a lot of that debris out of the rear of the foot. Okay, now let's talk about the sizing and the fit of this shoe. So first, the sizing. Like, I am a very average foot. I don't have an arrow foot, I don't have a wide foot, I don't have a high arch, I don't have a low arch. It's very average, right? So I do like toe splay. I have a size 11, American size 11 US, right? So for me, the sizing of this is spot on. Now, of course, Nike is one of the standard bearers in terms of kind of sizing and material and development, things like that. So I would expect them to be very good, but you never know. Some shoes, definitely the width of a shoe can affect the length of a shoe in terms of the way that it fits a particular foot. For me, the size 11 works really, really well. For Aaron and Andrew, it also worked very well. And Andrew, does have narrow feet. So it is worth commenting on the amount of room through the throat here, through the lacing area, that it, it is willing to accommodate wider or more narrow feet, even though a wider version is probably gonna be the option for you if you are looking for something that is specifically wide. Now, as we look into the toe box, kind of we'll go with fit from the front to the back of the shoe. The toe box does something that I frequently talk about with a lot of shoes. Like, I like a foot-shaped shoe. I like something that is going to allow my toes to splay in there and not really squeeze them together. And this does a good job because I'll hold it up against my sweatshirt here so you can see better. There's just a touch, like one or two millimeters more room right here. And frankly, there could even be a little bit more, but it's not bad. Uh, it, right here where the little toe goes, right? So the great toe or the big toe goes, it's kind of a straight shot up, I like that. I didn't feel like my toes were pinched, whether descending or ascending, I didn't feel anything like that. It's a well-shaped toe box. Could it have more room, be more foot-shaped, like an Ultra or a Topo or something like that? Absolutely, but Nike does a very good job in this. Now, as I mentioned a second ago, that internal kind of secondary mesh or liner inside of there does a good job through the midfoot, combining with the fly wire to really have a hugged feel like you feel like the the foot and the the lacing is going like this to the middle of your foot and holding things in place when you're on that off camber terrain or going uphill or on rocky stuff this does a good job again 
I'm not necessarily gonna wear this on super rocky stuff, but if I come across it, this is a good job of being able to handle that from an upper perspective really, really well. And the final thing with the fit is again around the heel, and this is something that Aaron had commented on when he was kind of writing his portion, and then I went back and put the shoe back on, did a couple more miles in it just so I could see if I felt that too. And he's right in terms of fit. Like this padded heel back here really does hug kind of, if this is your foot, it hugs around the heel, right? just kind of above the calcaneus and below the malleolus, those two knobs on either side of your ankle. This does a good job of holding that foot in place without you having to cinch this part down so hard that it's like squeezing your foot and then transferring that squeeze down into the laces. Aaron also commented that he has a very, very normal foot, right? A very average foot, although he's a size 13. And one of the things that he has found, especially as you get into shoes that have a little more foot shape and things like that, you're gonna find material kind of bunching up, right? So whether that's internally or externally or those two things kind of working against each other. And in this case, he did not, nor did I, notice any bunching of material, which again can lead to blisters, hot spots, rubbing spots, all those sorts of things. Now, as we move into the ride for the Trail Pegasus 4, this is the most important part to me, frankly. Um, because if the ride isn't there, then none of the other stuff matters, right? You can have a great upper of a shoe or a great outsole of a shoe, but if the ride sucks, what are you going to do? Now, in the case of me, I live in the Front Range of Colorado. We have a lot of dirt roads nearby. And because I am working to build up to the miles that I will be pacing Aaron at the Leadville Trail 100 here in about a month, uh, one of the things that I do to give my legs... Uh, a good terrain to run on. I want that dirt. So I will go and run on those dirt roads, but to get there, I'll have to run on a path or a, a paved road or whatever it is. So that gives me the ability to really have, have a, uh, from a ride perspective, just kind of from a ground feel perspective, the difference between a uh, paved road and a dirt road very, very quickly. And I will say that going between those two, there's really very little noticeability, I guess that's a good way to say it. It's such a smooth transition and you feel like you're running smoothly on a road to running smoothly on a dirt road and then onto a path and then onto the, so those single track sections that I've mentioned a minute ago. I love the way that this shoe kind of is very responsive it doesn't feel overly squishy. Again, Aaron here in a second, he commented that he felt like it was more spongy um, than I did. I didn't necessarily feel the sponginess, but I do feel softness, right? So I don't feel like I'm running on a piece of wood under my foot or something like that. And the ride of this is very smooth. Again, this is probably not gonna be the shoe that I am going to use on technical trail. Um, I definitely tried it on there because I wanted to be able to give you guys an accurate representation of what's going on here, but because there's no rock plate in this um, and because it's just not quite luggy enough to do some of those things, uh, it, it didn't it doesn't cater to that sort of trail, but that's not what it's for, right? This is a shoe that's ideal for that person that probably wants to cut some money out and not buy two or three or four pairs of shoes. This is also great for a business traveler. Hello, business travelers. If you're going someplace for a couple days, Aaron is going to Chicago, right? So here in a little while, and, and he's gonna be able to take a shoe like this or, or this shoe because he's gonna be able to run on road. He's gonna go find a trail. I don't know how many trails are floating around Chicago, but we'll find out and really just kind of do whatever you need done for the style of running that you might do or that you might come across in a place that you're not super familiar with. As for Andrew, he said that this is one of his go-to shoes. I mean, he went up to the Western Sierra Mountains. He lives in Southern California, as I mentioned a minute ago. This was the shoe that he really took out there, did road miles, did hard pack uh, miles, did trail miles, single track, all these things. Felt very refreshed and credits a lot of that to that re React foam that's down here in the midsole. And now, for Aaron, he actually commented that the 10 millimeter drive drop on this doesn't really feel like a 10 millimeter drop. It feels more like six. Now, if you're somebody who can't really differentiate between those things, which is, which is a fair point. I mean, not everyone has that kind of feel for those things, but if you're trying to get to a more low drop shoe, but you don't, you know, you're not going to look for one because this maybe works for your foot better. That's a really great way to look at it. And Aaron being somebody who runs in a lot of shoes is definitely going to be able to notice that sort of thing. Aaron also commented that this is actually quite flexible for the amount of material used under it. Cause what you'll notice is that the material you get to kind of like a folding point, right? So you feel the shoe flexing and then it goes bonk and it just kind of folds. Um, that said, it doesn't 
feel like it's going to fold over on some of that rocky terrain that I mentioned earlier. And in Aaron's case, he's actually hitting up a lot of roots and things like that. And he feels like that midsole is actually absorbing more of that underfoot kind of debris that you might otherwise run across and feel without a rock plate. Now, overall, Andrew, this is gonna be one of his go-to shoes. I mean, he commented on it. Again, please check out our written review. You can see the link down below. This is one of those things that is light, fast, responsive. It is um, 11 ounces in this men's size 11, ironic, which is right around 315, 312 grams, give or take. Um, for him and for me, it's a shoe that is gonna be something that if you want a one shoe quiver, right? So for me, this is one of those that's gonna be hanging out in the back of the car um, at, at a point, right? Because I've got so many shoes that we have to get to and things like that. But this is a shoe that I'm gonna put in the car because if I come across a situation, I'm already carrying shorts, socks, a shirt, sunscreen, and a hat back there. This is gonna be a shoe that is kind of that switchblade for me. Now, again, not the super rocky stuff, but if I needed to go on super rocky stuff and I knew what I was getting into with no rock plate in this, I would have no problem with that. The other thing that I'll mention about this is that it's $140 US right now. And by the way, please click on those links down below, take a look at it, buy it through there. It really helps us out here at Gearist. $140. Now, if you're spending $140 on a shoe that kind of stands in place of a kind of moderate to light trail shoe and a road shoe, that's a great price savings if you want to not purchase a third pair of shoes, right? So this is a good option for that. Also, great for that person to have as your switchblade shoe in your car, that Swiss Army knife that's going to be able to be there and run with you wherever you go. And this is also a good traveling shoe. I, I wore this when we went out of town. It was, um, so I, I don't actually mean traveling <laughs> in the airport, but I wore it when we went out of town to Virginia um, a few weeks ago because I could go on a trail and then I could go on road and things like that. So it's a really great option to add that flexibility with adding without adding one more thing to pack for you. The one thing that I will say that is, it's kind of a knock. Uh, I, I said, you know, there's no rock plates to be aware of that, but here's the thing. It's a little boring looking. It's just kind of boring. Now it's got, we got the bright yellow, green, neon thing over here. Again, you probably can't hear. I'll turn this light down again. Let's see. There, you get a better sight of that, but it's just kind of gray. And then you got some orange with the Nike Trail logo. I actually really like the elements of it. Um, there is a black version of this. Let me turn that light back up. There's a black version of this, which is a little louder. Like I like a louder shoe. I like kind of that um, stand out that's not really super quiet or anything like that. But if you don't care about the way that a shoe looks, which frankly, I don't really care. It doesn't really matter to me. It's not a deal breaker. It's not something that I'm going to go, am I going to buy that or am I not going to buy it? I want a good shoe that is high functionality and this does a good job. I have to say that I am very impressed with what a true hybrid shoe this is. Uh, it does a good job of making sure that you can cover all those different terrains without feeling like you're tearing up a road shoe on trail or frankly wearing down the lugs of a trail shoe on the road or something like that. And again, as I mentioned earlier, part of the thing with that is that you see hybrid shoes here and there and you always go, well, this is a great shoe on the road, but on the trail it kind of sucks or on the trail it's great, but on the road it kind of sucks. This does a good job of riding both of those things. I think this is a great shoe that everybody should get their feet in if you have the need for it. Um, I'd, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Why don't you leave a comment down below? Let us know if you've run in this shoe, if you're looking forward to running in this shoe. We'd love to hear about it. By the way, please don't forget to like, follow, share, subscribe, comment, put the notification bell on, all those things. We wanna hear from you guys. We've got a lot of content coming up, so be sure to subscribe. Again, take a look at all those links down in the kind of the information section, the comment section down below. We would love to hear from you guys anytime. You can always email info at gearist.com. Follow us on all the socials. That's Instagram, Gearist, Twitter, The Gearist, YouTube, Gear, all those things. Let us know what's up, let us know what you think. We look forward to hearing from you guys. Now get out there and we will see you next time.